purpose beyond profit. You address purpose beyond profit in your book. Are you saying a real A player puts the purpose of the company first? You really should, yes. And, and what somebody's purpose on planet Earth is, right? So you have the employee, you have the company. You really need to align purpose. And where you see it go wrong, where you see people who are fundamentally unhappy, they are doing something that's not aligned with their purpose or the company's purpose. How does that fit really in today's culture where there is really no loyalty? Um, the days of being at one company from beginning to retirement, they're gone. The company's not necessarily as loyal to you. Employees are not necessarily as loyal to the company. So how does that all fit in, being an A player in a changing environment where you can be a total A player and then the next day the company folds? Right. Well, you do have companies where loyalty is alive and well, right? So I agree with you in aggregate. You know, you look at the data, people are much more mobile in their positions, and uh, there are a lot of reasons for that. But there is fundamentally no reason why a company wouldn't be loyal, right? If you have A players and your company is very healthy, you want to sustain that, right? When you lose an A on your team, it really hurts. And what I find when people move on is they are looking for a better opportunity. So it's really as incumbent upon us as the leaders to present that opportunity. So if we want to retain people, we need to grow them to that next level and have a position ready for them. And the only thing that drives that is, you know, purpose and profits. Those profits allow that job creation. It allows you to reinvest in these larger roles or more roles. Mm. And that's, I think, the part people miss. A lot of people have no clue on financial mastery. Uh, a lot of MBAs have no clue on financial mastery. So. I would encourage every business person out there to really get comfortable with all of the financial statements, income statement, statement of cash flow, balance sheet, because when you understand how business works, it really informs you how to reinvest those profits, I like to call it prosperity, to create those things. So there's no fundamental reason, you know, if I'm cultivating A players on my team, they become extremely valuable to me. I don't want to lose them. Now, a great team, and I'll, I'll use in our sports analogy, you look at the great NCAA basketball programs, they're great every year with different players. So they don't rebuild, they reload. And I recommend that business owners take a similar thing because if you have systems in place and you know how to recruit and grow and you have great processes, people love great processes, it makes work easier, then you have a very streamlined, efficient business that's dropping profit to the bottom line. You can grow that and if you do, occasionally get poached, which hurts. Uh, trust me, I really don't like that. <laughs> but, you know, you dust off, you, you say your buys over the cake at the going away party, and you reload, and you're saying, you know what, that person was really good, I'm going to do better. Yeah. And, and you have the recruiting systems and the onboarding and the training systems to even potentially get a better candidate. You know, the legal ramifications of working with AA players, it lowers your legal risk, right? Because these aren't the people who are suing you. And if they do leave, right, when, when we call, we get great references, and there's very little risk in giving a reference call to an A player because they were terrific when they worked for you. Yeah. They moved to a better opportunity. Usually here, boy, we'd love to have them back. Get them if you can. And everything that they share with you in a reference interview collaborates 100% what, what they said in the interview. Let me put it this way. Having a team of A players will help your retention. It will help your company loyalty. Because I'll flip it around, in many cases, the employees aren't as loyal to the company. And I think we really need to redefine loyalty because if it's, you know, a tenured position and I'm going to guarantee all these rich benefits forever, and if you check out and you become average, I'm still going to be loyal to you, I recommend people take a contractor attitude, a 1099 attitude, which is you're as good as the last piece of work you did. Hmm. And I think that's really healthy, even if you're a W-2 employee, to think if I was a contractor, would the work I did last week, would the work I did last month, would they re-engage my services? And I think it's just a really pure way to go, uh, certainly the way people compensate me, and it really leads you to do great work. So if you're doing great work, you will have that mutual loyalty.